I declare the congregation open. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor. It's a rare privilege to encounter someone who can genuinely be described as inspirational, but Hani El Banner is indeed such a person. He was born in Cairo, the youngest of a large family. His father was a professor of Islamic law at Al-Hazar University. In due course, Hani followed his father to the same institution where he studied both medicine and Islamic studies. Both he and his father regarded Britain as the pinnacle of academic excellence. And so Harney came to this country to continue his medical education. He worked in several fields of medicine in National Health Service hospitals in this country, eventually finding his way here to Birmingham, where he specialized in fetal pathology. His doctoral thesis broke important new ground in understanding the development of spina bifida and anencephaly. With typical modesty, he claims to have hit upon his hypothesis only after receiving a grant to go to Bangladesh to help the victims of a huge cyclone there in 1991. His explanation is that life gives, life gives you more back if you abandon personal interest and try instead to give something to your community. His resolve to help those less advantaged than himself suddenly gave him a fresh insight into all that old data which had puzzled him up to then. Hani Elbana's greatest achievements, however, lie not in the field of medicine, but rather in his work, his humanitarian work, for the relief of poverty, suffering, and need throughout the whole world. While he was at a medical conference, in Sudan in 1983, he witnessed the terrible famine in that region, which had resulted from years of civil war. He asked to visit some of the refugee camps, and the destitution and the desperation which he saw there led to an instant resolve, underpinned by his deeply held Muslim beliefs that he must do something to help. The result was the creation in Birmingham in 1984 of Islamic Relief, a worldwide body of which Hani El Banna is today the UK president. At that time, during the 1980s, Hani felt that there was no proper sense of Muslim identity in this country, and he wanted to create an organization which would be recognized and respected in this country by the whole community rather in the same way as bodies like uh, Christian Aid and CAFORD are associated in the public mind with Christianity. Islamic Relief is today the largest Western-based international Muslim relief and development NGO. In 1984, Hani El Banna and his friends raised around 150 pounds for those in the Sudanese camps. Today, Islamic Relief has an annual income of over 80 million pounds and branches in 35 countries. It engages in both emergency and long-term aid projects, and they include the distribution of food and other essentials for survival in the aftermath of disasters, both natural and man-made. The organization also supports educational and health developments, as well as undertaking clean water and sanitation projects. It takes a holistic view to helping communities to identify their own needs. And for example, it provides interest-free loans which create job opportunities and help refugees to return to their homes. In his role as president of Islamic Relief, Hani travels extensively and some people told me that he spends longer in the air than he does actually on the ground. He visited Indonesia and Sri Lanka with an emergency response team to see at first hand the devastation caused by the tsunami in December 2004, 
which he describes as worse even than the effects of a war. He traveled to the Lebanon during the recent conflict there to assist in the relief effort. And he visited South Africa last month to launch an international forum on Islam and the reaction to HIV and AIDS. He is strongly driven by his faith, and he believes that charity is not a nine-to-five job, but involves an unceasing moral commitment to speak up for the needy at every available opportunity. Belief, he says, has always to be translated into action. His articulate voice is often to be heard in the political arena. He has addressed the House of Commons on humanitarian aid and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office on open dialogue as part of a tolerant foreign policy. He is actively engaged in the peace process in Sudan. He is unswerving in his belief that dialogue and inclusiveness provide the only answers to fanaticism, that the only way to tackle such problems is to sit down with people and to engage in what he calls the dying art of talking. This, he says, is the lesson of history, and it will prove to be the only way to win the hearts and minds of those who would otherwise resort to violence and terrorism. Those who fail to learn the lessons of history, he warns, are doomed to repeat it. He is a passionate believer in the interfaith dialogue and a member of the Three Faiths Forum. But he is concerned that there is a mounting distrust of Muslim-led charities. Islamic Relief has therefore had to exercise greater efforts than other organizations to be open, accountable, and transparent. And they're now working to encourage other Muslim-run NGOs to do the same through the Humanitarian Forum. The forum provides a platform on which many other organizations can cooperate and exchange information. Hani El Banna has deservedly won numerous awards and prizes from all quarters of the community. They include the OBE in 2003, the Kashmiri and Pakistani Professional Association Award, an Asian Jewels Award, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from Muslim Power 100. Pro-Chancellor, to you and to the university, I present Hani El Banna, deemed worthy to receive the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. By virtue of my authority as Vice-Chancellor, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Very well deserved. Marvellous. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. If you want to press the lower button on that, you can do it. It's a bit hard for you. Thank God that you are all here today. Pro-Chancellor, Pro Vice-Chancellor. It's a day to remember for all of us, and it's a day to thank my university and my city of honoring not Haniel Banna, but of honoring the widows, the orphans, the needy, the displaced, whom we are remembering them dearly today. They deserve the doctorate. It's not Hani Banna who deserve the doctorate. It's a day to remember that we are all here today to celebrate our city, the great city of positive multiplicity and our university. It's a day to remember the community who build Islamic relief. Taxi drivers, laborers, people in Small Heath, people in Lozell, people in Spark Hill, Spark Brook, Alamrook, and Salt Lake. 
So they remember also my family, which was me, especially my wife, who was without her help, I could not have been here with you. It's a day that we all celebrate at the children of Adam and Eve that we are equal and we are partners and we are leader for humanity. It's a day to remember your achievement, graduates and graduates, actually, and we hope that you bring peace to humanity. And we hope that your dreams and your hopes will be as aspiration for humanity. You are the future for humanity. Amongst of you will become presidents, become prime ministers, become ministers. See it happening, and it will happen. It's not difficult. It's a day to remember, actually, the great teaching of the greatest prophets and messengers of God. Jesus, peace be upon him. Muhammad, peace be upon him. Moses, peace be upon him. From the family of Abraham, peace be upon all of them. It's a day to rejoice all of us as brothers and sisters, as colleagues, as equal partner in humanity. So we'd like to drive humanity to safety. And you will be able to do this. I congratulate each and every one of you graduates and graduate for your achievement and God bless you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and Eid Mubarak for the Muslim and peace be upon you all.